We are about to go live on Nana Point One. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. Good evening, good evening, good evening, everyone. Welcome to Reviving Mississippi. Your host, the Keith Stamps. We got a great show lined up for you today. We got my good friend, uh, Representative Jeffrey Harness, represents uh, Jefferson, Claiborne, and Warren County. That's correct. And we're going to have a good show for you. So uh, go ahead and share the video if you're watching online um, and all those different places. Go ahead and subscribe. Um, as we begin every show, we always say, let's remember those people who are going through bereavement. Bereavement is a very trying situation, especially in times like this. So just remember all those folks who are going through bereavement because every week we are we are losing people. But also remember those who've gone on in years before because, you know, uh, we just celebrated the 60th anniversary of, of our slain brother, uh, Mr. Megger Wiley Evans and the whole family and all the different celebrations that were in place. Remember your, your ancestors, remember your grandmothers and grandfathers and uncles who've gone on. Take a moment to remember their life and legacy and share their life and legacy with your family. As we celebrate those heroes and sheroes uh, that are well known, take a moment and share your family history so that it can be remembered, it can be cherished, and your children can can benefit from from uh, from hearing those stories, and they can draw strength not just of the Martin Luther Kings and the Mega Evers and and the Fannie Lou Hamers, but they can draw strength from Big Mom. Just tell a story, mm -hmm. tell Granddaddy's story. Those personal stories are how we get our strength from. Yeah, we knew a lot of those famous people growing up, the the bigger name, but our family members that we knew. You know your grandmother's story. You know your grandfather's story. You know your mother's story. You'd be amazed how many children don't know their mother nor their grandmother's story. And you wonder why they don't respect you to the level that you think they should. Well, if they only knew what you've been through. I know sometimes as fathers and husbands, we try to be Superman to our children and our wives and so forth. But, you know, to our family. But. Let folks know when you're going through stuff so when you get through it, because God going to bring you through it. Mm -hmm. When you get through it, you got a story to tell, but then you got strength that they can draw from as they fight their wars. I'm dealing with a lot of situations right now with young folks having behavioral health issues and mental health issues and all that. I think that one piece of that is because our young folks are disconnected from the journeys of their fathers, their grandfathers, and their great grandfathers. So when it get hard on them, mm -hmm. they don't know that they can get through it. When they get when life get to wrenching them down, because life gonna wrench it down. That's true. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know that you come from strength, you think you're in it by yourself, and you turn to a bottle or some pills mm -hmm. or powder or all these different things that they got going on. Yeah, trying to get something to help you shoulder the burdens of life. But if you just reconnect with the journey of folks that you know, maybe you'll be able to endure it in a better way. So just take a moment to remember those folks who are going through bereavement, share stories uh, and family history. You ain't got to just always sit down and watch TV and you ain't got to yeah. always sit down and do something. You can sit down for a moment and just tell a few yeah. stories. Because when we were growing up, we didn't grow up watching TV. We grew up listening to Big Mama tell us a story or Granddad to tell us, hey, let me tell you something, boy. Yeah, we, that's how we grew up. All the time. All the time. You know, I was, um, we had a family reunion this past weekend. And, mm -hmm. um, a lot of my family from Pike County, Mississippi. And, you know, me and my cousins months ago, we decided to, you know, we needed to, we needed to get together as mm -hmm. a family so that the, our children could know some each, other. Of, each other and some mm -hmm. of our accomplishments that their elderly cousins, elder cousins have, have made. Mm -hmm. And we told a lot of stories, Sadie. We had a lot of fun, but we told a lot of stories. Mm -hmm. and I think it was good for them. So I, I agree with you, uh, Representative. I agree with you 100%. Most definitely. Uh, we want to start off by thanking our, our underwriter, underwriters today's show, Mr. Michael Jordan, the Michael Jordan Transportation Service, always providing great quality transportation services all over the state of Mississippi, specializing in senior citizens and educational development and challenge folks, but more importantly, more importantly of everybody. So if you need a ride, you can go to www.mjstransportation1.com.
www.mjstransportation1.com for your transportation needs. That's www.mjstransportation1 for your transportation needs. Also, if you get hungry and you want some good food, it's not fast food, but it's good food. Go on over to Stamp Super Burgers and get you a, one of those whole cows between two pieces of bread that's tasting to the last drop. Or if you're healthy like some of those other folks out here trying to lose a little weight and all that, go and get you that veggie burger. It's like a whole garden between two pieces of bread, but it's good. Get some of those sweet potato fries. Tell them I said hello. And they're not going to give you a discount because I said, I told you to go over there because it's a business. But it's good food, and uh, but it will give you quality work every time, and it's been consistent for a long time. So go on over to Dollar Street and get you one of those stamps super burgers. Ladies and gentlemen, today we got the great honor and privilege of having one of my good friends, Representative Jeffrey Harness, on the show. Representative Harness, welcome to the show. Thanks a lot, man. Thanks for having me. Last time you came, I wasn't here, so I was like, I got to right. get yeah. you here when I'm here. <laughs> yeah, man, I've been beating the campaign trail down pretty hard. Uh, I've been meaning to come up here for a couple months now since the session was over. Mm -hmm. Finally, I was able to come in and... Uh, you know, hang with you for a little while. I'm a brother in the legislature. Well, I, I met about three years ago, three over three years ago, yep. and we became good friends. And uh, we're gonna always be lifetime friends, I think. And uh, just wanted to share an hour with you. Let's okay. See what, and let's talk. Let's talk about issues. Mm -hmm. So, for those who don't know you, just take a moment to just introduce everyone. Uh, Jeffrey Harness. Who is who is Jeff? Jeffrey Harness is. I'm from Fayette, Mississippi. Okay. I'm Fayette, like down in Fayette. We say through yeah, and through, through and through Jefferson County. Uh, but uh, I grew up in Jefferson County. I went to school there. Uh, I uh, I went to Alcorn State, got a mm -hmm. degree in agriculture, and after that, I I started teaching uh, social studies. Mm -hmm. I taught a little bit of social studies, driver's education, mm -hmm. uh, physical education, and I was a football coach. Mm -hmm. We had some pretty good football teams during that time. And after that, I uh, matriculated to, uh, got my master's degree. And after that, I got uh, a specialist, and then I went to law school. Mm -hmm. and so I'm currently an attorney, but I also serve in the Mississippi State Legislature in the House. Well, you're, you're a legacy Alconite like myself. I didn't mm -hmm. attend Alcorn State University, but mm -hmm. our parents and the whole generation, you have done great things in that area. Tell a little bit about your, about your time. Yeah, my mother and father, both attended all corn at the same time. My dad mm -hmm. went there first, and uh, he met my mom uh, over in Pike County, over in Macomb, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, she followed him to all corn, and they they got married soon after they graduated. Mm -hmm. uh, they were married almost fifty years. Uh, my mom uh, was diagnosed with cancer in two thousand ten, and she succumbed from from that illness in two thousand twelve. Mm -hmm. But my dad, uh, my dad, uh, my dad was a uh, he was a professor and they, he worked in cooperative extension at Alcorn for about 30 some odd years before he retired. I believe it was 32 years. 32 years. Um, Dr. Harness is, 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 some may know him as Dr. Jesse Harness. Mm -hmm. And my mother was a school teacher in uh, Jefferson County and uh, a few other places for about 40 years. Wow. And she was a, she was a great lady. Yeah. Well, you know, school teachers make them some of the best. When, when you talk about children, mm -hmm. My sister's a school teacher. And right. we're talking about she can teach her children. Her children are rock stars. Mm -hmm. So that, that's where you get that smartness from. Oh, yeah. That means mom stayed on me all the time. I, You know, she was always on me. It was just hard losing her, you know. Mm -hmm. And I also have two uh, brothers. I have a son. My two brothers, Jeremy and Jesse. My mm -hmm. son, is, his name is Jaquan. Mm -hmm. uh, King, Jaquan, uh, he's uh, about 26 years old now. I got to think about it. <laughs> they grew up quick, though. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So um, tell us a little bit about your uh, political career. What made you want to run for office in the first place? Well, um, growing up in my house, there was always a debate at the dinner table. Mm -hmm. my, uh, my, my, my parents made us, made us uh, watch the news every day. Mm -hmm. When we got up in the morning, the news was on. And uh, when we sat down and ate, we were, my dad would challenge us on, on debate questions. He would ask us issues that were going on in the news, going on at school, going on in the community. Uh, we would debate gospel, I mean, script, Bible scriptures. Mm -hmm. And so it was that love for the debate and, and that process that initially got me interested in politics. And I, I can remember Jesse Jackson running for president 
Uh, when I was a young kid, I believe I was probably 10 years old. Mm-hmm. And to see a, uh, see a black man, black man at that stage, uh, it inspired me. But uh, mm-hmm. I grew up around a lot of people. And Charles Evans was the male fed. I, I, you know, I talked to him growing up. Um, my dad inspired me. And, uh, and so it's been something I've been wanting to do since I was a kid. And mm-hmm. when the guy that, uh, when Representative uh, Chuck, America Chuck Mills, and when he retired uh, unexpectedly, I thought that was a great opportunity and I took advantage of it. Well, you've been doing a yeoman's job in the legislature. Oh, thank you. In, in, yeah, a, in, in a very challenging um, situation. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's talk about the first, when you first got there, what year did you get elected? I got elected initially in 2018. It was a special election. Okay. It was the, the last year of uh, Chuck's uh, term. Mm-hmm. He retired and uh, took over for him that January, that last session. Mm-hmm. So that was a special election. Then the general election came the following month, three months later. And uh, uh, that was in 2019. So I've been here ever since 18. So it's my fifth year in the legislature. So what are some of the things that you found? Um, I know everybody says it's, they think it's one way before you get there. Mm-hmm. And then once you get there, you find it's another way. How did you think the legislature uh, was before you got elected? You're exactly right. Uh, now, you know, me being a student of the law, I had a probably a better idea of what to expect than somebody else, mm-hmm. but I was still blindsided by the process of the legislature, mm-hmm. the rules. Yeah. I was totally blindsided. And sometimes people will, 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 will let you sit out there and look crazy. You know, they won't tell you anything. So I grabbed a rule book and I started studying this rule book, you know, the legislative rules. And I had a lot of help along the way, gentlemen like Robert Johnson, John Hines, uh, and, uh, you know, I have a lot of I have a lot of people that that supported me mm-hmm. in this journey. A lot of the uh, a lot of the members that have been there for years, mm-hmm. you know, they kind of wrap their arms around me, made me feel at home. Okay, what are some of the things that you uh, are passionate about in the legislature? What are some of the issues that you really push uh, have been pushing for the last five years? Well, of course, you know, as a government of issues, uh, but. Uh, when I'm a, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an educator. Mm-hmm. I still say I'm an educator, even though I'm not in teaching the classroom. Mm-hmm. I'm very passionate about education, public education, uh, public schools, and I, I really want to take care of our teachers. Mm-hmm. Uh, because I feel like uh, a lot of times teachers are being overlooked, and mm-hmm. and for whatever reason, society has changed its outlook on the teaching profession, mm-hmm. and. Uh, they are the most, they are the probably the backbone to our culture in this country, in this nation. Mm-hmm. And we can't do without teachers, you know. My 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 parents both went to three room schoolhouses up until the eighth grade when they were growing up. They finally matriculated to bigger schools when they got to high school. But until they got eighth grade, they went three room shack schoolhouses. And I and I and they and they came so far. And just imagine how if we would pay more attention to education and mm-hmm. doing for education and doing for our educators and put our children first. I, we, I think we've been a much better place as a nation. Mm-hmm. There are also other issues, uh, criminal justice reform, uh, voting rights, trying to, you know, there's a war out there against us for, you know, disenfranchising votes for whatever reason. Uh, I'm heavy on that. Uh, we need to we need to fight, continue to fight for a broadband across uh, free bar uh, access broadband to everyone in this state. Uh, man, I could go on and on, but like like I say, education, criminal justice reform, um, things of that nature, and you know we work not the same in the hospitals. We need to we need to try to expand Medicaid. That's another uh, that's another thing that's on my high priority list at this time. So let's um dive into a little bit about your district. Give mm-hmm. us a little bit about your district and what are some of the things that people may not know um, about that bright spot that I call that southwestern Mississippi. That some people, they get, you know, they, people know about the Delta and they know about mm-hmm. the Jackson area, the coast, mm-hmm. but that area that you represent is a special spot in Mississippi. Tell mm-hmm. us a little bit about your district and some of the great things that are going on. But you said the right thing right there. I want to first talk about the people. The mm-hmm. people in Southern Mississippi are great. It's like the hidden gem of, of the nation. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
of Southwest Mississippi. The soil is fertile, natural resources are plentiful, mm -hmm. and the people are hardworking. And uh, you know, I just love to live there, I'm, and I'm happy to serve the people of Southwest Mississippi. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a you know we have an all all corner city in our back door. Heinz Community College is, is junior college is located in the district. Compile Lincoln Community College is located in the district. So those are three destinations where people, persons, individuals can go and get an education, a higher education. They can get a trade. Uh, it could be welding, electrician. So there is a there's a high bed of there's a lot of potential in, in Southwest Mississippi. The schools are getting better. All our public schools are improving. We we all probably have B grades, nothing lower than a C. And over the last four or five years, they have really been improving. And I'm, I'm very happy about the progress that we're making. Uh, we have a lot of young leadership now in these, in these uh, Port Gibson and Fayette, both counties and city boards have young leaders that are doing an excellent job. Uh, of course, Warren County, Vicksburg is uh, not a young leader, but he's a, uh, Mayor Flags is doing an excellent job with Warren County. And over in Meadville with Lane Reed and uh, Mayor of Butte, all of those people are, are very progressive. Mm -hmm. They're looking for new ideas and a new way of doing things, but they're doing it the right way. Mm -hmm. And they are being engaged in the political process. I went to a political forum in Port Gibson last night, and the, and the place was packed. Mm -hmm. It was packed. And that's what we need. I want to be held accountable. That's right. Ask me the hard questions. You know, and uh, it's not a laughing matter because we got some serious things that we got to tackle, serious issues that we have to tackle in the state. You know, you told me something that was pretty profound and sunk in with me, and you may not even remember saying mm -hmm. this, but you said that going down the Highway 18 corridor is like black man's hell. Right. Highway tell 18. Me, tell me about you know what made you say that. I said that because you know, you know the majority of residents. And that, that goes into Clayton County, mm -hmm. and it's the, it's, the, it's the gateway to Hines County, mm -hmm. which is our capital county. There are a lot of, uh, there's some great people that live on Long Highway 18, but then the natural resources, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, land out there is what really, is what really I fell in love, I fell in love with, all the way from Port Gibson up to Raymond. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful out there, and there's a lot of potential. We need to try to, and that's another goal to try to work on Highway 18, to, you know, to improve it, and uh, Highway 61 to improve it. We gotta, we gotta get, we gotta get this four lane going in Cleveland County to, to get more access, uh, so people can have more access to the area, mm -hmm. and more commerce in the area, you know. So we can build from that. We can build from 18 Highway 18, and of course, the majority of the per individuals that live uh, in that corridor are African American. Mm -hmm. And these people are trying to better themselves and better their way of life. So we need to assist them in that effort. It takes definitely takes leadership. Mm -hmm. um, what are some of the upcoming events that you have coming up or is going on in that, in your area? We got some Juneteenth Juneteenth events. Of course, you know mm -hmm. Fourth of July is going to be full of uh, things going on. Man, I mean you can't go to the, every one of them. That's right. That's you right. Know? I try to get to every one of them. And it's like the last month has just been so much. And that's a good thing. You know, uh, I think people sat back at uh, for, from COVID. Mm -hmm. I think people are ready to get and, out. And people are ready to get out, but they we'll also want to do it safely. Mm -hmm. And they want to have some fun, but they also want to have some meaningful fun. Mm -hmm. And that's what we've been having in my district. There have been some uh, quite a few festivals. Uh, uh, Fayette had a uh, festival uh, a couple of weeks ago. It was outstanding. They had a parade. They had game for kids and it was a gospel uh, extravaganza. Uh, Franklin County is going to be having a, a river festival in a couple of months. And Vicksburg is always, it's always something going on in Vicksburg, especially mm -hmm. downtown. Because a lot of the economy for up 61 mm -hmm. kind of hooves up in Vicksburg. It does. It does. Um, I want to backtrack just a second. Mm -hmm. Talk about education a little bit because, you know, Children and old and older people mm -hmm. got a special place in my heart. Yeah, and those people who serve serve in in those roles mm -hmm. as, as educators. That's correct. Are really servants. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. It's power. And especially with our lack of men in the school districts, mm -hmm. 
and, and you putting a slice of your life mm -hmm. into that. Talk a little bit about the importance or what you learned during that experience and the importance of having men in the classrooms and in the schools to affect our young people. You know, the first thing that, that I want to say about that is that children will tell you about yourself. That's right. Okay. Kids will kids will tell you about yourself. You know, you if you better come in there correct, if you don't come in in the classroom correct, you're not going to get any respect in that classroom. Okay. Mm -hmm. The whole point of the the whole point of the model that we use in this country as far as education is that the teacher has to be in control. Mm -hmm. And that's when the importance of, of men being in the classroom come in. You know, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's good to, to, to for a man to teach because, of course, our males need our leadership, but our females also need male leadership. Mm -hmm. They need to see a man in leadership positions. And you could, in the lives that you could touch um, in the field of education, is just, it's just great. I mean, kids that I taught and that I coached, they come to me all the time and say, I appreciate you. You know, they probably were mad at me. Uh, mm -hmm. But now they come and they say, you know, I appreciate what you did for me. And uh, so it's important that we get more men, more black men, especially in the field of education. And that's why we work, you and I both work so hard to, uh, you know, we're working hard and diligent to raise the salaries of our teachers in mm -hmm. this state. So that we can attract good teachers, good male teachers. Because you know, it's important that a, that a man is able to take care of his household. That's right. You know, he can't he can't do that if he's not getting paid for the amount of work that he's putting in. That's right. So that's why we lose a lot of them. And you know, it's very hard to to get folks to to come teach, especially in, mm -hmm. in, in, in rural areas. That's correct. Um, so let's talk a little bit about um, athletics. Okay. You know, that's a passion of yours. Mm -hmm. um, talk a little bit about, you know, as a coach and a football coach, what, what are some of the things that you take from that experience? Well, for one, I think it's very important in, in school districts, not just football, but I believe that every, I wish that every student could be in some type of extracurricular activity. Mm -hmm. I believe that when your schools have more students involved and in, a variety of sports, not just the same people. If if seventy five percent of our students were involved in some form of extracurricular activity, it could be debate team, it could be three club, anything. Then I believe that that will raise the level of test scores up. That will raise the morale and the culture of the school district would get much better. And they got to, they don't have to be undefeated as long as they're involved. And so I would, you know, that's that extra time too. When you know, when you're not, it's not. It wasn't just about X's and O's. It was a, an opportunity to further nurture these these young men. That's right. To become uh, productive citizens in the community. You can't save them all, but I will say that the majority of the young men that I coached, uh, they are doing pretty good with themselves at this time. And how many years did you coach? I coached five years on the high school level. Four, but four as a a head football coach in the mm -hmm. high school and one as a uh, junior varsity and eighth grade coach. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's dive back into the legislative side. What okay. um, are some of the things that you've been proud of that you've been able to accomplish in your time as a legislature? You know, uh, I'm going to start at uh, one of the bills that I was able to generate. Uh, there was a young lady in my, in my hometown that was, uh, she was, uh, it was an accident. Mm -hmm. uh, she was she was uh, killed in a car accident. It was at that now. Now is the town. It's been annexed into the town, but it was right outside of town. And uh, then there in Port Gibson, there were several accidents doing on the main strip of Port Gibson on 61, where the speed limit is about 45 miles an hour. These people were just they were probably driving a little too fast and had accidents. So I. That was a bill that uh, that lowered the threshold, the population threshold, so that small towns can have radar detectors. Because before that, mm -hmm. you had to have twenty five hundred people, right. you know, and so that, of course, all of, uh, other than Vicksburg, that's all of my communities. That's know, right. Less than twenty five hundred people. So you got mm -hmm. whole towns that even 
have got caught. Mm -hmm. They couldn't even have um radar radar. Yeah, right. But go ahead. Hold on, Carl. Let me finish this comment and we'll get to your question. Hold on one second. Um, but then I was very happy to be a part of the you know the state flag. That was something historical, something that I never expected to happen. Mm -hmm. But to be a part of the conversation in the beginning and to you know to go across the aisle and and you know that was COVID going on and I was I was I was proud of everybody in the body for the leadership in changing our state flag. And then as a teacher raised the highest we've had, I don't know, probably in the ever, but uh I won't don't quote me on that, but one of the highest teacher pay raises in the history of uh, the state. Uh we're we're trying to work on broadband as it's not where I want it to be, mm -hmm. but uh is we're moving in the right direction. You know, when we first started this this uh this these four years, you know, we 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 really worked worked very well across the aisle. That's right. It wasn't until the last two years that <laughs> things started going left. You know what I mean? I get look, there's a lot of there are a lot of uh bills that bills that, that I ought to to have co opted and opted and, and voted on that that would help the people of our state. Mm -hmm. Let's get this caller. Hello, caller. Welcome to the show. What's your question or comment? Mm -hmm. Hello, how are you? Thanks for having me. Uh you 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 you're live on the air. What's your question or comment? All right. Well my question is uh What's your opinion on that kid, uh, Terry Rogers, who's been a talk to the state and is running for commissioner of agriculture? What's my opinion of Terry? Yes, sir. I would say Terry is probably the one of the most hardest working people on the ballot. And I would say that Terry is not about who Terry is today. Right. Who he will be in five or 10 years once he gets a little more experience. Oh, he's gonna be a rock star because I think he's been in like seventy some <laughs> counties already. So he's you know, working hard. He's, he's working. He's working very hard. So I look forward to um, to continue to um, work alongside. We've been on the campaign trail. Him and, and, and we got a real good ticket this time. Yeah, but you have a question for Representative uh, Jeffrey Harness about the topic we're talking about? Hello. Uh, sir. And did, did you have a question about what we talk? The topic we're talking about? I just want to tell the opinion. He's one of my opinion. Oh, okay, great. Well, thank you for calling in. <laughs> All right. Go ahead, Representative Hardis. Yeah. Um, so like I said, I was saying I think the the last two years is when we started to go to the left, but uh we've been in been able to do some, you know, have some success in criminal justice reform uh in my committee uh of Judge B. Uh, then, you know, like I said, sometimes we are able, sometimes I don't know what the leadership was thinking about, but then we were able to do some things, you know, as far as uh, lightening up some sentences for people that is in the criminal justice system. system. Uh, we've been able to uh, give assistant teachers uh, raises as well in the field of education. And one of the things I'm, I'm proud of is, is, is you know, at Alcorn State University and myself and uh, Representative Holloway, Gregory Holloway, we probably mainly author, co-author all of the legislation when it relates to Alcorn State University. Mm -hmm. And I think that we've been able to make some very huge gains in, in Alcorn and keep an Alcorn relevant and uh, uh, and I'm very proud of uh, the work that we've done with the university. So now we talk about the past and the present. Where is the future of your district going? What, what, what's over the horizon? Some of the things that you got over the horizon. I believe that, like I said earlier, we have a lot of, see, the, what makes us good right now is that we have a lot of young leadership in, mm -hmm. in place. Mm -hmm. and Especially in Claiborne County. It's, it, with Jefferson, too. Jefferson, Jefferson more than Claiborne. Well, for Mayor Fayette. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the mayor's doing an awesome job, the board members. And so uh so these we are able to work together mm -hmm. in all in uh, in uh all the counties, Franklin as well. We're working together better than we ever had. And uh I think the foundation is being set right now. Mm -hmm. Uh and we're gonna we and that's part of my platform for the next four years to work that all of the counties in, in my district, not just my district too, but Southwest Mississippi, mm -hmm. form a coalition. We form a coalition and we determine what our greatest needs are and what our greatest assets are mm -hmm. in, in terms of economic development. And we move from there. You know, just for example, we have a 
we live in this is a rural district, so we have a lot of hunting and fishing, mm-hmm. a lot of deer hunts, a lot of fishing, fishing. You know, people like that environment, so we need to harness that. We need to enhance that. Mm-hmm. You know, we need to, you know, Alcorn State and Colony to be our backbone. And and we and, and as far as luring businesses, there we have we have the capacity to to train a workforce with mm-hmm. Colony and Hines and Alcorn. Mm-hmm. You don't have to go far to get. A certificate or a degree, mm-hmm. like we have in other areas, they are right there, mm-hmm. and we have the land to, you know, we have the infrastructure in place. Now, so you know, my question is, what are you waiting on? Let's let's go ahead and get this ball rolling because, like I said, the gem of the South is Southwest Mississippi. You know, I always look at Pittsburgh and Natchez as kind of on their own little islands. Mm-hmm. Your district is kind of like that glue that build that brings that together to create some synergy mm-hmm. between right. between Vicksburg and Natchez, mm-hmm. and, I, and I'm excited about the future because you got good quality, stable leadership in place. Exactly. Um, at multiple levels. Exactly. At the, at the municipal level, mm-hmm. at the county level, mm-hmm. and at the state level. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So I think that the groundwork is in place, and, and, you, and you're poised. To, to really take off because you got a seasoned mayor down in Natchez, you got a seasoned mayor up in Vicksburg, mm-hmm. and you got good leadership all between. Mm-hmm. So I'm excited about the future of Southwest Mississippi. We just have to continue to work together. That's right. That's it. Got to work together, which is a challenge in itself. Yeah, it is. Ladies and gentlemen, the call in number 601 948 5950. The call in number is 601 948 5950. You can give us a call. And if you got any questions for Representative Jeffrey Harness, who represents the house district out there. He's been there for five years now. Actually, I thought you had been there longer than that. Oh, no, only five years. Because I've only been there three years. Mm-hmm. And with the amount of knowledge and experience that you have, it seemed to me that you had been there for terms on top of terms. Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that's, that comes with reading those rules and just getting in, getting in, just rubbing elbows with, with everyone. Mm-hmm. And of course, you're excellent at that. <laughs> I learned a lot from you, uh, Representative. I really did. Well, don't learn how to talk at the well. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm tell a funny story <laughs> somebody called in. Y'all go ahead and call in so I cut this story short. I was, at, I was at, in the in the Capitol one day and they asked me to present a bill. And I was like, okay, mm-hmm. all right. I got my bill. I done my homework. I made my little outline of what I was going to say. I had it all laid out. I had practiced it up, y'all. And I got up there and I started going through my points, Mm -hmm. point by point. I was articulating it and articulating it and I was just doing the do. Mm -hmm. And didn't know that I wasn't standing close enough to the microphone so the only people who could hear me is the folks who sit right in the front where where Representative Harness and and, and Representative Cockerham Mm -hmm. sit. The whole rest of the audience, nobody could hear me. Now the Mm -hmm. folks online could hear me. Yeah, Mm -hmm. of course. But the folks who were in the room could hear me. Exactly, I remember that. And so I looked up after I got done reading everything I was supposed to read. And one of our colleagues from Columbus, Representative Kabir Kareem, said, I couldn't, we could hear nothing you say. <laughs> and I'm like, I know I'm talking loud enough. <laughs> and Representative Harness leaned forward and says, Who are you reading the bill to? Latasha Jackson, who's a representative who sits right in front of the way. <laughs> uh, that was just a funny story. Yeah. A little side note, but. He's always been a challenging person to challenge me to be better and challenge everyone around to be better mm-hmm. so we can move our communities forward. And, and that's what it takes. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you have those those comic relief moments. And, and that day, I was the comic relief. Mm-hmm. For not, for, for oh, not, I've been, oh, I've been <laughs> in those shoes. I ain't going to tell no stories. <laughs> but I've been in those shoes as well. Yeah. We got a comment online. Chris Williams says, speaking of hunting and fishing, why do citizens of Jackson have to go east of 55 to go fishing? Why not make it where we can go fishing at Lake Haiko, put that water back and restock it with different kinds of fishes instead of making it? I, I, I totally agree with you. I, I believe that um, when you're in charge, be in charge. And, and Lake Haiko is a prime place to go fishing. Um, I do believe that, you know, there could be some additional utility of Lake Haiko. Um, for those who don't know, Lake Haiko was turned over from Intergy, Mississippi, back into the hands of the city. Mm-hmm. But um, one thing that can happen is to create an alternative water source. Right now, the city of Jackson gets its water from the reservoir. And if we create an alternative water source in Lake Haiko, 
we would have additional capacity for water purification and distribution, which would help us be more resilient when it comes to water. So, you know me, I'm always going to lean stuff back to utilities and how things that can make it work. But that's what I believe we can do with Lake Haiko. Just like you do with the reservoir, oh, you can do the same thing at Lake Haiko because the water from Lake Haiko comes from the reservoir. That's right. They dug a huge pipe mm. from the reservoir, mm -hmm. already like Lake Haiko, and they pumped the water there. Mm. So yeah. what, since they drained it, they just cleaned the bottom of it, cut the water back on, put the fish back in there. Mm. You know, yeah. and so um, I do believe it could be an economic development piece. It could be recreation, the same types of recreation that that had that take place at the reservoir can happen at Lake Kaiko. But I'm just me offering my suggestion. As y'all know, we've been here nine years or so offering suggestions. Some get adopted, some don't. Some don't. But I'm to the point now where maybe somebody else needs a suggestion because it, when I suggest it, sometimes people don't listen appropriately. So mm -hmm. um, slide it over to the to the, to the, to the, to the, to the, to the city of Jackson um, that we could uh, have an alternative water source for the city of Jackson. We just fill the deck on reservoir back, I mean, the Lake Kaiko back up. And let folks go out there and go fishing and ride boats and boats and jigs and all kinds of stuff. Recreation is always, you know, soothing to the soul, that's for sure. Ain't nothing like a little economic that's development. Right, that's now, right. there's some prime real estate that has been created by the reservoir. Mm -hmm. So we have a mini reservoir in Lake Haiko that all we have to do is fill it back up with water. And immediately all that property right around it will become, you know, seemingly more valuable on par with the recreation property that's uh, right there off of um, by the reservoir. you right off of off 220, you know, so I uh, believe you could put, a, you know, something out there. Yeah, yeah, that, 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 work. That, 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 does, that does sound like an excellent idea. Yeah, you, know, yeah. you, know, you know how when you're just traveling down, the, you're in your vehicle and you're just traveling, you see things, you see potential, mm -hmm. and you lock these ideas in your head, you know. And you know, if, it, you know, if it, this was just a utopian society, we could just, our, we could craft our imagination to how we want it to. Mm -hmm. Just imagine what we could do. But what we what we don't have it like that. But we we can work hard and and uh, go through the process. There's always a process for everything you do. We can work hard, mm -hmm. but don't be afraid to disseminate your ideas. Mm -hmm. Don't don't hold your ideas inside. That's right. There's too much of that going on, especially mm -hmm. in in our community. We you know we got talented people that. Don't express the ideas enough. And I my challenge to everyone is to get a part of the process. Mm -hmm. First of all, go out and vote. But if you got ideas, don't be afraid to put those ideas out there. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because, you know, somewhere in one of these great books I read, it said, uh, you know, if people perish because of lack of vision. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. If God gave you a vision about something to share with the world, that's, that's, that's what you got. That's very correct. That's outstanding. You you know, say that, yeah. Share it out mm -hmm. there, you know, because um, we always got to work together and do better together. Um, again, ladies and gentlemen, call the number 601-601-5950. You're listening to WMPR 90.1 FM. Our guest on Reviving Mississippi today is Representative Jeffrey Harness. He is a five-year veteran of the Mississippi Legislature. Uh, from Jefferson County. He grew up right there in Fayette. He's an all-corn state university graduate, former educator, attorney, and state representative. So give him a call. Give us a call at 601-948-5950. Ask him a question. Um, anything on your heart? He has an election coming up. Um, tell the folks about your campaign, what you what you learned on the campaign trail. You're out there beating the bushes and shaking the trees. What you what you what are the what's the pulse of the people out there in your district? <laughs> Well, it goes back to what I was saying earlier. I think that people are excited about the future and the direction that we are headed in. Mm -hmm. And the best thing about, yeah, we, you know, it have been great if I didn't have an opponent, but the best thing about going out and campaigning is that I, I have the opportunity to meet. I'm always meeting somebody that I didn't meet four years ago or that I haven't met during the last five years. Mm -hmm. You know, it's amazing. Even in my own home county, I may talk to somebody that I hadn't mm -hmm. talked to before. Mm -hmm. And so it's good to get their ideas and I take I take that with me mm -hmm. uh to the Capitol. Mm -hmm. And may, you know, all of everyone is a piece of me and a part of me. Mm -hmm. And so I think that the, the people are the people are serious <laughs> as, as I've ever seen them oh, yeah. about change. You know. You're not gonna 
you're not going to go to the people in, in the 85 with trying to fool them out of a boat. That's right. They're very capable. Uh, they the knowledge level is way up there. And, you know, you got to be straight up with people. There's no hiding the ball from these people. Oh, that's right. Because they've so, been, they've been, they've been, Mm -hmm. Big talk to before they've been lied to before mm -hmm. they've been song and dance before they've seen the mm -hmm. dog and pony show. Mm -hmm. They want meat and potatoes, and people are tired of that. Mm -hmm. And and you know, and you've learned the last couple of years in the legislature. Sometimes you feel like you're at war. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you feel like you are at war. That's right. And in a lot, in a lot of situations, we are. This is a, these are very serious matters mm -hmm. that we are tackling at this time in this history of this nation. And not just this nation, but I mean, just not just this state, but this nation, because we we're dealing with the same matters across the South. Mm -hmm. uh, instead of moving into the moving to the new millennium to the 21st century, you know, we're dealing with decades-old issues. They're trying to revive decades-old issues, critical race theory, uh, disenfranchisement of the vote. I mean, all types of foolishness that we need to uh, we got to gear up and. We got to get up and get ready to fight this foolishness. And so at the same time, we got to have, but at the same time, I have hope for the future. That's right. I feel the I'm future. I'm encouraged. Is, I'm encouraged. I feel the future is bright uh, for Southwest Mississippi and bright for this state. We have a few stumbling blocks that we have to overcome, but I think at the end of the day, we're going to be just fine. You know, one thing that I had that gives me hope, gives me hope mm -hmm. after all the back and forth, 99% of the time, Everybody votes together. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It's just those. Now it wouldn't be. That's not a statement that, that mm -hmm. people wouldn't think of. Mm -hmm. But about ninety-eight, about say ninety-eight percent. Mm -hmm. We vote pretty much the same across race and party lines. It's the two percent that makes the news all the time. I want to say this, and this is to my white brothers and sisters, my white brothers and sisters out there too. The leadership. And I, and, and, I, and I respect all the individuals in the, at the Capitol with me. But I don't agree with everything. For one, you know, we're going to the polls and vote in a few months. Think about how the issues, let's just take Medicaid expansion. Think about how the people that are being voted are refusing to even take up Medicaid expansion. Mm -hmm. And just think about how Medicaid expansion can help all the citizens of this state mm -hmm. save these hospitals from closing. Not just these hospitals are closing just in predominantly black areas, they're closing in white areas as well. Mm -hmm. Stop voting people that vote against your interests. Look how much money you can save for your families if we had Medicaid expansion. And I and, and, and I mean it wholeheartedly. Right. And even the people that are voting no and don't want to deal with it, they're just doing it because they've been pushing to do it. That top-down leadership model is not working Almost in this state. And, 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 you know, we talk about it. They're taking credit for a budget surplus. But they say they don't want big federal government. But the reason why we had a surplus was because of federal government. That's right. You know? So it's like it's so much hypocrisy. Uh it's so it's so much hypocrisy. So we, we, we got to stop thinking about voting along, along racial lines, start voting on the issues, mm -hmm. you know, because it's food being taken out of your out of your household. Mm -hmm. You know, is you they, you are preventing your we are preventing our kids and our children and our state from growing into the you know to the to the new generation of the world. So you know. I just want to challenge, issue that challenge, you know. Stop voting against your own interests, you know. You know, I think it's, um, when it comes to federal money, mm -hmm. we're in a situation where we have federal Republicans who vote against infrastructure money. Mm -hmm. But then when we get the money, they gobble it up and put it in Republican areas. Exactly. But they voted against it. Right, they vote against it. They vote against but it. But they show sure enough use it, though. They show enough use it. <laughs> so, they, but then they reluctantly take mm -hmm. federal money for roads and bridges, mm -hmm. but refuse money for hospitals. For hospitals. Now you got babies being born in ambulances. Mm -hmm. I got to call a baby. Baby being born in the passenger seat of cars on the way to the hospital. Because if you get, if you, if you go to labor, if you go to labor, boy Gibson, 
Some places you know how long it's going to take 45 us? minutes an hour to get to the high emergency room. Right, but here in Port Gibson, mm -hmm. if you're going to have a baby, do you know since Mary Health is shut down, mm -hmm. you know how long it will take you to get to St. Dominic's? Oh, yeah. It's going to take you an hour. You ever been in the hospital? It's going to take, take an hour if you're driving fast. <laughs> right. Yeah. You, <laughs> you know, know, so um, I just encourage everyone, this is going to be what I call a mixed bag election. Mm -hmm. People are going to pick that ballot up, and you got some black folks who normally just vote this way. They're going to vote this way. You got some mm -hmm. white folks because everybody voting their interests in their issues. Exactly. And so that's what I encourage everyone to do is pick up that ballot mm -hmm. and vote your interests. Yeah, you know, we're sitting up here debating on Jackson takeover and critical race theory. Wasting, that's the leadership now. That's the leadership. Yeah. Wasting everybody in this state's time mm -hmm. and tax dollars on foolishness man. Yeah. on on issues that this man right here now i'm looking at this picture ladies and gentlemen it's a picture of charles Evers. he's at the state capitol drinking from a water fountain that has white written above it that picture was probably taken in the mid 60s mm -hmm. sometime after his brother passed was assassinated mm -hmm. and we are 40 60 years later Debating issues that were fought and died over in 160 years ago, mm -hmm. 140 years ago, today, and, and that goes to everybody that, you know that's watching. We got to stop this. This is this is this is just ignorant. It's just ignorant. It just doesn't make any sense, you know. So tell the folks what you want to do and when you want to do it. I want them to go vote on August 8th. That's when I want them to go vote. And I want them to vote what's in the best interest of their of for them and their families. Mm -hmm. And not because a uh, rich Republican who's out of touch with regular Mississippians gets to get on TV all the time and, and he can afford commercials and all of that and, and lying to you saying that he's making or uh, she's making Mississippi better. When in reality, we're moving backwards. Mm -hmm. Backwards in a lot of ways. I have hope for the future, but we got to stop the trend of this Republican leadership and things that they're doing in this state. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Okay. Well, we appreciate you for coming on the show, Representative Harness. You're always welcome to come back anytime you want to come back. Thanks for having me, brother. I got two minutes left to go on the show today, and I want to encourage everyone, everybody, a lot of everybody, to make sure you pay particular attention to this electoral process. We got several events coming up in the future. Next week we're going to have we're going to have some wonderful young ladies on the show from the agency. They're hosting a voter registration drive. They're going to be kicking off all over the state of Mississippi. It's going to be on uh, the 24th on that Saturday from 10 to 2 p.m. at Smith Park. They will be kicking off their voter registration drive, and they are dispatching folks all over the state with the goal of registering 79,000 people to vote. They have 86 agents, I believe it is right now, uh, positioned all over the state who have different cities of influence, and they'll be having these voter registration drives and That's rallies great. and door knockings all over the state of Mississippi That's great. to get people re-registered. Mm -hmm. See, it's not just about being registered to vote. Mm -hmm. If you don't vote where you live, you need to re-register because that increases the likelihood of you going to vote. So re-registration is the is the, is the goal. Is you can go right to the Facebook page and check out everything. Um, we posted the the flyer on our Facebook pages and everything. So go participate. That'll be on the twenty fourth from ten to two p.m. at Smith Park. And they're hosting a voter registration rally and kickoff. You can sign up for your town. You can sign up to partner with them. Other organizations, NAACP, and other. Other, whoever wants to register folks vote, uh, you can partner with them at future upcoming events in across the whole state of Mississippi. So be on the on the 24th of June from 10 to 2 p.m. Also, there's a um, event coming up Tuesday in your area. Okay, tell about that event. Tuesday, Tuesday the um, meet the candidates. Oh yeah, meet the candidates. Yeah, there will be a meet the candidates. Uh, for statewide officials like the DAs and, 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 and the local officials will be there too mm -hmm. uh, in Claiborne County uh, at First Baptist Church on Tuesday. It starts at six o'clock. 
Uh, I encourage everyone to pack a church out. It will also be on 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 be filmed, you know, live on Facebook, Instagram, and things of that nature. So it's Tuesday at six o'clock in Cleveland County. Uh, meet the candidates. You're going to have statewide candidates there, uh, regional candidates, and of course the local officials will be there as well. Well, we appreciate everybody for your uh, for your support. We appreciate everybody for your time. And remember, y'all, take care of each other out there. It's a rough world out there. It's a lot going on. Take care of each other. Take care of your family. And we'll remember our underwriters. Underwriters for today's show, Mr. Michael Jordan, the Michael Jordan Transportation Service. You can go to www.mjstransportation1.com for your transportation needs. Also, go on by Stamp Superburg and get you a whole cow between two pieces of bread. Get you some good food versus fast food over on Dalton Street. And remember, like we end every show, we always say, never let anybody put you in a position where you don't love your own people. Because when you hate your own folk, you're part of the very oppression we're trying to lift ourselves out of. I love you, Jackson. I love you, Mississippi. Hannah, get us out of here. Take care, y'all.